and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new sets, Stitched Hillside Borders and Forest Border. Now I went ahead and bent apart those little wire uh, connectors there and I was left with four dies here. And you'll see what's really cool about these dies is they're actually mirror images of each other. And that's so you can create some really cool layered hills later on. So here is my first stitched hill side and I'm just cutting it through my die cut machine just like normal and you'll see what a cool amazing detail it is there on that hill. Now I wanted to show you that you can change the angle of these dies and get completely different looks. It's super cool. So now I'm just going to angle it in a different direction and with the same exact die I got two completely different borders by just changing the angle of that die. Here is the other hillside, the mirror image, so you can see the other angle that you can get. And when you layer it with the other die that we just cut out, you get some really cool looks. You can layer it behind, or you can even put it in front. And I love that depending on what you're looking for for your card, you can really customize it. Now here is the super bumpy, crazy hill. It's super dynamic and fun. And it's really fun to combine the more simple hill with this bumpier hill. With this die, just like the other one, you can change the angle and get a completely different look with the same exact die. So you can see that was cut with the same die, yet you get a totally different look. Now we'll go ahead and cut the other wavier hillside border. And I just love how it looks. It's just so neat. And uh, layering them is really, really fun. And then now I've layered one of the uh, less wavy borders behind it. And it's really kind of a cool look. Now here is a really cool feature for these dies. So it's got that great stitching detail. And if you put the die with that stitching detail down, just like this, so you lay the die that way, flip it over and put it down on your cardstock, you're gonna get these cool hills that we've been cutting throughout the video. But if you take that stitching line and you put it at the top so that that straight cut line is at the bottom and flip it over, you'll see when you die cut, you're actually gonna get a hill without the stitching lines. So with one die, you can get either stitch tills or not stitch tills, and I love that. And then here's a look at how you could layer those non-stitch tills. Really fun. Now we have our forest border die, and this die is so cool. And by the way, both, all of these dies that we've been playing with, they're all six inches long, so they'll more than cover the front of your card. Now here, when you run the force border die through your die cut machine, you get this really, really cool tree line. I just love it. And just like the other dies, you can change the angle of the die and get a completely different look so that you can layer them and create cool, dense forests or kind of like layers of forest like that. Now I wanted to show you that the angle and the curve of the forest border matches the stitched hillside border. So you can use them together, which is super, super cool. And add a little stitching line to your trees. Now, if you wanted to create a more sparse forest and get kind of a different look from one die, all you need to do is just take your scissors and trim off some of these trees. So as you see, once I start taking these trees off, you're gonna get a more sparse forest. And one less tree, and you can see the cool different looks, again, from just one die. And you could even use the little trees that you cut off on a different project or as confetti. Now here I wanted to show you how well that stitched border hill lines up with the forest border. And so if you wanted to have the stitching line with the trees, that's a great way to do it. Now we're gonna go ahead and start creating a fun card with this. So right here, I'm looking at my set Spooktacular and I know I wanna use the Happy Halloween sentiment at the top of my card. So I'm using it as a little placeholder so I can decide where my force border die needs to go. And it looks so cool cut out of that black cardstock. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make a little mark because I'm gonna be using Distress Ink later. So it's just gonna tell me how far I have to put the Distress Ink down. Now I'm going to use the stitched hillside borders on a bunch of different pieces of cardstock. And I'm going to layer the, bo the border at whatever angle that I would like, and then go ahead and die cut it and add it to my panel. So that's what I like. I can just angle that die, whatever I think is going to look really cool, die cut it, and then add it to my card. And now one last border piece. 
So you're going to see here, I'm just making some tick marks and that's so I know once again how far I need to go putting my distress ink and you'll see why those little tick marks are there later. So now it's time to go ahead and layer this and just make another tick mark to see where I need to trim all of these pieces down so they fit on the front of my card. And I like doing that, that way I'll make sure that the hills are really the best distance apart. So now I'm going to start doing some distress inking and you'll see because of that little tick mark I made, I know I only need to do the first, you know, third or half of the card. So you'll see here I'm sponging on the ink in circular motions starting off of the cardstock or on the cardstock but below the area that I know is going to be covered by the dye. And I'm just going to keep sponging on ink as you see here, the dark purple first and then the medium purple and then the blue. And you'll see I continue to take that die cut and layer it over. And that's because I wanted the purple to be super dark, but not so dark that it got lost behind the black trees. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't adding too much ink. The little blue at the top looks really cool, but I wanted to blend it in more. So I'm taking my medium purple color and layering it over. And now you'll see it kind of created a lighter purple at the very top, which I think looks really cool. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and continue to add ink until I think it looks perfect. And now we're going to use the same technique for all of the hills. So I'm starting below that tick mark or off to the side of my piece and then adding that ink on. Uh, this is peeled paint distress ink and I'm going to start with a darker hill up top and then continue to lighten up the green hills as it goes towards the bottom. So I'm going to keep adding on ink, which looks really cool because it makes those stitching lines pop. And now I can move on to the next till. And this one I'm using crushed olive and then I'm going to go over it with peel paint too. And by mixing those two colors, I'm going to create that medium color so that I can kind of create a gradient as I go down. Distress inks are so fun because you can keep layering until you get the perfect look. Now it's time to work on my next till and I'm using mowed lawn, shabby shutters and peeled paint for this one because the mowed lawn ended up being a little bit too bright so I kind of had to layer a bunch of different colors to get the right color on there. And I'm going over in circular motions. I'm going in fast speed here but uh, I'm going over the, in circular motions and then it's going to give that nice blended look when you do that. So now I can go ahead and layer my force border piece over and I'm just loving how that sky's looking. And now I have my Monster Mash stamp set. And this is one of the brand new stamp sets. I love it. And I had already pre-stamped and die cut a few of them. So I thought I would just do some super basic Copic coloring. I'm only using two colors on each little monster, but it just gives them a little extra pop to have uh, the little extra shading on there. Some of them I'm doing the shading from left to right or right to left and like this one here I'm doing the shading from bottom to top and I'm just kind of playing around. That's the cool thing about monsters. You can color them however you would like. Now here I'm using some white gel pen on their little fangs there. I thought that would really make them pop. And now a pink monster because why not? That's what I love about them. These, be, these would be really cool paper piece too. Now that I have my monsters all ready, I'm just kind of playing around with the placement of them and the hills and kind of seeing what I would like. And that's when I realized that I thought I needed another hill. It was a little too plain at the bottom. So I went super speed here uh, and created one more little hill. Now I can start layering all of these hill pieces together. I started with tape runner and then now ro rolled up glue dots to have some dimension but not as much as foam adhesive. It's a cool way to kind of get a little dimension, but not too much. I'm starting to go ahead and tuck my monsters in so I can decide how much it, foam adhesive I want to put on the next layer. And I thought just one layer of foam adhesive would be good. I, it, this card is getting very, very three dimensional right now. And you'll see I stamped out a bunch of little trick or treat bags from the spectacular stamp set. I ended up only using one. My original idea was to have all of the monsters trick or treating, but I ended up liking the idea of them just sticking out from behind the hills better. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add that little trick or treat bag to my purple monster. And then I can layer my extra piece. And so this piece is a little bit longer, but I like that because I could decide which part of the hill would be best. And I made a tick mark and just chopped off that end. And now you can see how cool it looks with that extra hill added on with some more rolled up glue dots. And now it's time to start adding my monsters. And just like the hills with the varying degrees of dimension, I'm gonna do the same thing with the monsters. So some just have tape runners, some have two layers of foam adhesive, and that's really gonna give some cool dimension to this card. And I just love putting them behind those little hills. Now next up, I am going to do some heat embossing and this is an EK Success powder tool and it's an anti-static tool that's gonna help the heat embossing powder only stick to where I just stamped with Versamark ink. And then I can heat that up and get this really cool, shiny, beautiful sentiment. I have a black card base, which I thought would be a really nice pop there for those forest leaves and purple sky. And then I'm gonna tie a bow with some of the new spooky lawn trimmings. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of position my little loops there and then use a little glue dot behind the bow to hold it in place. That way it doesn't flip over. So it's gonna make it look perfect on the card. And then I'm gonna take the heat of my fingers and curl the cord right at the bottom just to give it a nice finished look. Super, super cute. So that is forest border and stitched hillside borders. I love these borders so much because you can create really cool scenes, kind of like we did here for Halloween, but it would work well for snow or spring or a cute little bunny card. I mean, there's so much that you can do with it. Here you can see that with the stitch hill sides, depending on what angle we place the die, we were able to get completely different looking hills, which means you can really customize it to your project. These hillsides are perfect for layering. That's why I love them because after you cut out your cool hill shapes, you can layer them and create some really, really fun looks. You can also turn your dies upside down and get a non-stitched hillside too. And of course the forest border is awesome. I just love how you can do a sparse or full forest. So thank you guys so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.